Hi everyone! Most probably, many of you think that radiation is something bad, especially after such a film as Chernobyl came out or after the nuclear accident in the Japanese city of Fukushima. However, since the time of Marie Curie's discovery of radioactivity, it has been proved that radiation can be useful, especially in medicine. But how is this possible? Can such elements as uranium or plutonium really be used to cure diseases? Not really. However, their fission products, for instance, such a metal as technetium, can. Now I'm going to tell you more about this unusual element. The history of the element with the atomic number 43 dates from the 19th century, when Mendeleev predicted the existence of this element in the periodic table between molybdenum and ruthenium. But even 60 years after the assumption of the great scientist, no one could find any traces of this element in the Earth's crust, no matter how diligently people searched for it in minerals containing manganese or uranium. That's because these elements' chemical properties had to make it resemble both of these metals. Everything changed in the 1930s, when Ernest Lawrence invented a device called cyclotron, which was one of the first particle accelerators. After certain experiments, it was discovered that some molybdenum parts of the accelerator became radioactive. After running a chemical analysis of these radioactive parts, researchers discovered that there was a new chemical element in a piece of the molybdenum foil. Later, it was named technetium, which is a Greek word meaning artificial. Thus, technetium became the first artificial metal, which people managed to synthesize, because up until then, naturally occurring technetium was never found. That's because this element is radioactive, which means it doesn't have stable isotopes, which is why it gradually breaks down into more stable elements and simply disappears. Since this metal almost never occurs naturally, how can we obtain it? We can use a particle accelerator, a piece of molybdenum 100 foil and bombard it with protons accelerated to 10% of the speed of light. During this process, molybdenum core absorbs a proton and after radiating a neutron turns into technetium-99. However, if you remember my previous videos about accelerators, You'll recall that operating such a device for a day costs as much as a new Volkswagen. That is why there are more affordable ways of obtaining technetium. For instance, it can be extracted from a spent nuclear fuel. For instance, upon fission of nuclear fuel, 1 gram of uranium-235 produces 27 mg of technetium. That is why by recycling nuclear reactor fuel rods, we can obtain cheaper synthetic metallic technetium, like this technetium in the ampule. Even when synthesized using the cheapest method, this small ampule with a piece of technetium 99 foil costs 400 euros. That is why it's quite pricey to obtain this metal for a collection. It's worthly of note that when a radiation dosimeter is held over an ampule with technetium, the radiation reading almost doesn't exceed the normal level. That's because the technetium-99 inside the ampule mostly radiates beta rays, or in other words, fast-flowing electrons, which almost fully get absorbed by the ampule glass. By the way, after texting with the seller, I found out that the ampule doesn't contain pure technetium, but rather a piece of thin gold foil, which is covered in a thin layer of technetium. That is why the price of this metal is insanely high. Besides being found in nuclear reactors built by humans, later on technetium was also found in a so-called natural nuclear reactor, which is located in the African country of Gabon. It turns out, in a place called Okro in Gabon, there are rich uranium deposits and, according to scientists' calculations, about 2 billion years ago, the underground uranium deposits began to be inundated with groundwater. The liquid is a great neutron moderator, and as soon as the uranium-rich minerals began to be inundated with water, 
Under the bombardment of slow neutrons, there began a spontaneous uranium core fission reaction, which could even boil away the surrounding water with the heat it generated. According to scientists, such free hour cycles of refilling with water and short nuclear reactions lasted for thousands of years, and vestiges of uranium core fissions such as xenon bubbles or technetium rich minerals can still be found around that place. However, the natural nuclear reactor produced a negligible amount of technetium. That is why, for modern day use, technetium is synthesized in normal nuclear reactors built by humans. To be able to show you a big piece of technetium, I decided to go to the Radiochemistry Academic Department of St. Petersburg State University, where a small piece of technetium foil has been stored since the 1950s. For safety purposes, the ampule with technetium is stored in a lead case. When a dosimeter is within close proximity to the ampule, the radiation background starts to significantly exceed the normal level. At that time, it seemed very strange to me, because all beta rays radiated by this metal had to be absorbed by the glass in the ampule, and the background radiation didn't have to exceed the normal level. At that time, it seemed very strange to me, because all beta rays radiated by this metal had to be absorbed by the glass in the ampule, and the background radiation didn't have to exceed the normal level. It turns out, technetium radiates so many fast electrons that when they hit the glass, they create so-called deceleration radiation. My dosimeter with a sensitive micro sensor somehow managed to detect weak X-rays coming out the glass ampule. If we look carefully, we can even see that a small area in the glass near the piece of technetium has slightly grown dim because of the powerful stream of beta rays. In reality, this scene was captured on camera in 2019, before the pandemic, but that's not the point. Unfortunately, professors of that university did not let me run any experiments with technetium, except taking some measurements. That is why I'll improvise. To conduct experiments instead of technetium, I'm using another metal, which has very similar chemical properties, that is rhenium. According to the textbook data, chemical properties of rhenium and technetium are supposed to be very similar, because rhenium is a fellow radioactive metal of technetium, and it also actively dissolves in nitric acid, forming pertechnesic acid. By the way, this process is very similar to that of extracting technetium compounds from spent nuclear fuel for synthesizing this metal. However, using this nuclear fuel extraction method, we can only obtain technetium-99, which is the most stable isotope of this metal, but it's also one of the most useless isotopes of this metal, because there are a few industrial uses of it, due to its high price and radioactivity. Nevertheless, another isotope of technetium has much more applications. So-called metastable technetium 99M is used in medicine for conducting cancer tests. I will not be me if I didn't show the main applications of this isotope. That's why I'm going to get ready to go to our central hospital for shooting video. I'm going to the capital of Estonia, Tallinn. I have been given permission to shoot medical procedures here, which are linked to the use of this technetium isotope. The very metastable technetium 99M is synthesized right in hospitals as a result of radioactive decay of molybdenum 99, which is produced beforehand as a result of radioactive decay of uranium 235 in nuclear reactors. Molybdenum 99 is stored in special generators, where it slowly produces highly active technetium isotope. In order to obtain a technetium solution for medical purposes and to separate it from excess molybdenum, 
a figless ampule with low pressure, is inserted into the generator. As a result, silane from the other jar passes through a special column with molybdenum isotope and aluminum oxide inside the generator, which serves a filter. After that, the solution containing technetium, or in other words sodium pertechnetate, is separated from sodium molybdate and is sent to the upper ampule. As soon as technetium comes off the generator, my dosimeter immediately registers increased background radiation, because technetium 99M radiates a rather powerful stream of gamma rays. For safety purposes, lead glasses are installed in the fume hood, where technetium is synthesized. They almost fully absorb gamma rays. Workers also wear special protective gear to protect themselves from radiation. Even the jar with technetium looks quite unusual. It's made of lead glass and tungsten for maximum protection. After obtaining medicinal technetium, it gets diluted in a medicine before being given to patients. In our case, it will be used for running a thyroid medical test. That is why technetium needs to be diluted in regular saline. After diluting technetium, the medical worker checks radioactivity of the injected solution to make sure the patient is not exposed to excessive radiation. As a precaution, even the syringe has a tungsten case. Obtained technetium is most commonly used as a radiochemical medicine for diagnosing cancer and other diseases. That's because of the convenient half-life of this isotope, which is just 6 hours, and it significantly lowers the risk of harming patients as a result of the radiation. What happens next is even more interesting. The obtained radioactive technetium solution is injected directly into the patient's vein. After that, the patient becomes radioactive for about 24 hours. I would like to express my deep gratitude to the patients who allowed me to shoot this and to the nuclear medicine department of the Central Hospital of Tallinn. After being injected, a patient waits for about 15 minutes and then a tomographic image can be taken. The tomograph is equipped with special scintillation detectors, similar to those of regular dosimeters. Because thyroid accumulates technetium well, almost as well as iodine, during the test it becomes the most radioactive organ. It can be clearly seen on the screen, because thyroid glows brighter than all other tissues. Such an image is later forwarded to a doctor, who makes a diagnosis. The active technetium quickly flushes out the human body through kidneys, and also quickly decays because of the short half-life of technetium 99M. For additional information, I'll say that it is metastable technetium that is used for medical purposes, because this isotope score is in an unstable state, and in order to stabilize itself, it radiates powerful gamma quantum, which can be easily captured by the tomograph. The short half-life of just 6 hours and quick flushing out of the human body helps reduce radiation-absorbed dose of the patient's organs. This diagnostic method can also be employed to run tests on other organs, such as the heart or nervous system. It's important to select the right additive for the technetium solution, in order for the organ to absorb as much radioactive medicine as possible, and to be easily seen in the tomograph. Well, I think that was quite interesting video about such a radioactive and quite useful metal as technetium, and it took me two years to collect the needed materials for it. And I think for that you can give a thumbs up for this video and subscribe to my channel to see many more new and interesting. And also I'd like to say a big thanks to the company OnyxMed, who has provided me a small technetium sample for the video. I'll put a link to their site in the video description.